What's up guys? Now I've had a lot of people ask me a lot of different types of questions on Instagram, Facebook about the general basics of a home theater system. And I just thought I'll make things simple and do a quick video for you guys and answer all your questions. So grab a drink, grab your snacks and let's talk about learning the basics of a home theater system. But before we start, let's hit that intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's a home theater system? The idea is simple. A home theater system provides theater-like experience in your home. Now it can be a dedicated home theater or a living room. But what exactly does that mean? The quick short answer is, well, there is none. A home theater system can be as simple as a few devices in your living room or as complex as a big puzzle that'll take you a long time to finish and get it right. A home theater system should provide a high quality video and audio experience that brings your favorite movies or games to life. When you vision a theater like experience, you straight away probably think of a projection system with a very large screen, right? Generally, in a dedicated home theater room, the projector and the screen combo is what's best suited, in which you can completely control the lighting, but we're in 2020 now. And now there's so many manufacturers now offer high brightness projectors and ambient light projecting screens that are specifically designed to use in bright rooms. The two common types of projectors are DLP, which stands for digital light processing or LCD, which is liquid crystal display. Before buying a projector, you'll need to understand the basics of what a projector is and what it can do. Things like lumens, brightness, lamp life, lens shifting, lens memory can make a big impact on your experience as well as your wallet. And as for the screen, you have a choice of fixed frame, pull down or a motorized screen and most screen manufacturers offer a big range of screen materials to suit different projectors and environments. So make sure you do a lot of homework before purchasing this type of combo system. You also need to think about what screen shape you want or need. This kind of choice kind of depends on your room size and layout Questions like, do you want a 16 by 9 screen that's more suited for HDTV and some other older movies, or do you prefer the new technology, which is the 225 to 1 ratio screen that lets you watch CinemaScope movies without the black bars? Of course, this also depends on your projector. The choice is yours. On the other hand, TVs are pretty much the driving force of the home entertainment systems. Thanks to the constantly falling of prices, you can now get a much bigger screen for your money. Whether it's a massive 75 inch plus or a standard 50 inch, the flat panel HDTV is a great foundation for a home theater system. Best part is you can watch it in all kinds of lighting situations. Even outside on a sunny day, you'll get a crystal clear display. Two current trends in the TV world are one, smart TVs that connect to your home internet and stream services from Netflix, Stan, Spotify, etc. And two, Ultra HD or 4K or even 8K nowadays, which offers four to eight times the resolution of 1080p, which includes advanced technology like HDR, which is high dynamic range. If you want to know more about TV versus projector, I'll put up the link on the screen for you guys, so check it out. The other main element of a home theater experience is the audio, in which sound elements shoot out from all different directions. 5.1 channel is the most basic surround sound system, which consists of five speakers such as front, left, front right, center, and two rear channels, while the point one stands for one subwoofer that helps with the bass for low end effects like big explosions. The more common setup nowadays you'll find is the 7.1 channel system, which uses the same speakers with additional of two surround channels for a complete surround experience. We all know the latest trend is the 3D object based audio. This means formats like Dolby Atmos and DTS add additional two channel speakers for a overhead audio experience like objects flying over your head or the sound of raindrops, etc. You can either mount these speakers on the ceiling facing down towards you or have them facing upwards on your front floor stand speakers. Speakers come in all shapes and sizes. You have floor standing towers, bookshelf models, or thin built-in wall speakers. Companies like Klipsch provide speakers that are low in profile but high in performance, which also means the smaller the speaker is, the more important it is to have a subwoofer to help fill in the low end. If you like the idea of surround sound but is not practical enough to have speakers in your living room, 
due to space or have kids or any other reasons, soundbar has become a popular solution. What a soundbar does is incorporates multiple speaker channels into a single speaker bar that you can mount on a TV cabinet or floating above or under your TV. If you want a good sound experience, it definitely is a great upgrade to any TV that has poor quality audio. Now their soundbars are so high tech that they even support DTS and Dolby Atmos, creating an experience of a dedicated home theater room with fraction of the cost and equipment needed. You don't need all these speakers and other electronic components like receivers and amplifiers, which are the brain of a home theater system. Those electronics receive the audio as well as video signals from your components and distribute them to all your speakers and display device. Electronics have two categories. One is your AV receivers and two is the separates. An AV receiver puts everything you need in one chassis as for the separates require two boxes. One is your preamp to process a signal and two is your amplifier to power up the speakers. Whether you go for a receiver or separates, when shopping for a home theater system, you want to make sure that the product has enough inputs for all your other source devices. HDMI is the major connection of choice for most devices, so make sure the unit has at least six or so ports just in case you want to add more components later on. Also make sure you have enough speaker channels and possibly more than what you need as I like to always future proof things just in case. If your setup consists of running a variety of devices on your receiver, it's a good idea to invest in a cooling fan such as the AC Infinity sitting on top of the receiver to cool and circulate the airflow and prevent from overheating. The main device in any home theater system will be some sort of movie player or a streamer. I think we're way past the Blu-ray players, but a 4K or Ultra HD player with built-in streaming services is the common choice. If you're a hard copy movie CD collector like me, this is where a 4K player will come in handy. But if you're a digital collector, you might consider a video server that can store all your movies. One other very important source of a home theater system is gaming consoles. Products like PS4 or PS5, which I cannot wait, and the Xbox One also support Ultra HD streaming video. Okay, so the basics are all sorted, but what about the accessories? If you're adding a home theater system to any existing room, you may not have the flexibility to incorporate new seating or lighting, but at least you need to consider equipment rack, TV stand, or a TV mount. For those who are lucky enough to be creating a dedicated home theater room, the possibilities are endless. To bring out the very best in your audio system, consider acoustic treatments such as these panels I have in this room to help and correct any non-standard sound that your room design might create. If you're going to buy expensive speakers, no point of putting them in a crappy listening environment. You'll be surprised what the results of bass traps and absorption panels can do to the room, but we won't get into that detail right now. That alone is another big chapter itself. Any of you guys want to know more about the pre-build stage of a home dedicated room, here's the link on top of the screen, so check it out. Once everything is completed and you have all your home theater elements, it's a very good idea to invest in a universal remote to control them all. Last thing you want is playing around with five or so controllers just for a movie. One of my favorite controllers would be the Elite Harmony Universal Controller. It definitely makes life easier and very easy to use and program. One addition you could also add to this room is a smart device such as Alexa or Google Voice Assistants to control certain aspects of the room. Now I know all of this might sound scary and expensive, but every home theater enthusiast knows this is a very expensive hobby and you don't necessarily need to start off with high-tech equipment. In fact, start with the basic components and see what you like and there's always room for improvement. I hope this video has helped some of you guys. If you have any questions, please comment in the section below. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. It will help me create more videos for you guys in the future. I'm Sarkis. I'll see you guys in the next episode of H-Studio 3.0. Peace.